right, guys, welcome back to another video. Let's start off here talking about the next wave of Xbox Game Pass games. But before we go over those, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and make sure to check out my Spotify link is in the description. So let's start off here. A game that is actually in the previous wave of announcements that it was out yesterday. It's a day one game is Harold Halibut, which is like a adventure narrative style game, all handmade narratives. It looks really, really cool. The graphics out that they have going for this game and the reviews are out on it and it's getting pretty good reviews. So if you're just wanting to set back and get a cool story this is probably one for you i will be checking that game out at some point but now we get into the next six games that have been announced for xbox game pass orcs must die three coming to cloud console npc on april 17th and they say here you can play a solo or two-player co-op arm yourself with a massive arsenal of traps and weapons slice burn toss and zap hordes of repugnant orcs in his long way to successor to the award-winning tower defense series so if you like tower defense games this will be one for you like i said april 17th that one drops and then you have nhl 24 coming to ea play and coming to game pass as well on console on april 18th just in time for the start of the nhl playoffs so it's a nice time to get this game and people are going to be excited for the playoffs and they will probably be checking that one out i play nhl every single year i've already been playing this one since it came out so it's a good game. It's a nice upgrade from NHL 23. Island Chronicles 100 Heroes Cloud Console PC coming April 23rd. This is a day one Xbox Game Pass game. Very excited for this one. Basically, the spiritual successor to the Sigurdin series. And if you played previously the Iodine Chronicles a smaller game that they did release, that it was a part of beginning this package of this new series that is coming out. It was a side-scrolling action adventure game but this here is more of a 2.5 d turn-based jrpg and i mean if you ever play the sukadin series you will see exactly what it's like it looks really cool from videos i've already been seeing about the Iron chronicles 100 heroes i will be checking this game out when it does release and then we have here another crabs treasure coming to cloud console and pc on april 25th this is another day one xbox game pass game and What's interesting about this, it says it's a Souls-like adventure set in a crumbling underwater world. I mean, just by looking at the picture, you probably wouldn't have thought it was a Souls-like game, but it is. And you play as Krill, the Hermit Crab. It says you'll need to wear the trash around you as shells to withstand attacks from enemies many times your size. Embark on an epic treasure hunt to buy back your repossessed shell and discover the dark secrets behind the polluted ocean. So... If you're looking for another Souls-like game, that will be one for you. And then you have another day one game, Manor Lords, coming on April 26th to PC, and it's a medieval strategy game. Then you have Have a Nice Death coming April 30th to Cloud Console and PC, which is a 2D action roguelike game. And uh, we've seen this game before. It looks really fun. So a decent announcement here for Xbox Game Pass with the next six games that are coming over. For me, I had in Chronicles 100 Heroes is probably the highlight and probably the one I will be checking out out of all of these six. And maybe Have a Nice Death, which is one that I've seen videos of that looks pretty fun. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments below which games here you guys are going to be checking out here from this Xbox Game Pass announcement. All right, let's talk about some Mafia because it looks like we're finally going to be getting another Mafia announcement from Take Two. An awesome series. I've enjoyed all of the Mafia games. And if you go back and play the remakes of uh, the first Mafia, really, really well done. And then Mafia 3, when it came out, it had its issues. And there was a lot of kind of divisiveness among the people who played it. But overall, I think it's a pretty good game. It says here, Twitter user Kurakesis has claimed that Take-Two is preparing for a Mafia series announcement in the near future. Previously found early information on games by discovering trademarks, which could suggest that the game has recently had a trademark filing and could be gearing up for an announcement. And as well, last year, there was a job listing for a Mafia game and that said the game was to be an unannounced multi-platform game currently in pre-production using Unreal Engine five so if you're into the mafia series this could be the one for you uh, and they also say here that Kotaku reported in may 2022 that the game will be a prequel set in sicily the birthplace of the mafia and it'll be set years before the first mafia game which was saw players assume control of tommy angelo in the 1930s so that sounds very cool to me i love seeing games go back to 
Italy from the Mafia series and just kind of get to the roots of where it all started. That's something I will absolutely be playing. So I hope that is the truth around the announcement. I hope that is kind of what they are going to be giving us when they do finally show us this game. And Unreal Engine 5, every time you hear games coming out on Unreal Engine 5, I get pretty excited because I want to see how these developers are going to really take that next jump to better graphics. And and we're going to see a lot more of this in the upcoming year just from Hellblade 2 and then hopefully if we do actually see a Gears reveal at the Xbox showcase and then all the other Unreal Engine 5 games that will be shown off at the showcases this summer I think we will start finally feeling like we are getting a next generation a bunch of games from at least the graphical perspective so cool to see hopefully this game does get announced this summer and we will get another game in the Mafia series okay let's talk here as we've been talking over the last couple of days about the PlayStation 5 Pro because we have a bit more information on the PS5 Pro. This thing is coming. It's going to be announced soon, going to be releasing this year. You can pretty much bet on that. We have even had Sony as go as far as getting the videos taken down from the PlayStation 5 Pro specs leak where we saw the document of everything that they are going to have in this console information that was being sent to developers for the games that they were making for the PlayStation 5 Pro. So that alone really shows that, I mean, hey, this is real. Sony doesn't want this information getting out. I don't know why it took them this long to figure out this information was out because it's been out for weeks, but the Sony, they say here, has filed a copyright strike against the PS5 Pro leak video for Moore's Law is Dead. And the video has been removed from YouTube. I'm guessing people talking about this, Sony are, are going to be going after, or at least if they're showing off the documents that that are supposed to be internal documents only for developers and for Sony themselves. But we have more information here, and it says that Sony wants a 60 FPS PS5 Pro enhanced games, but it's happy to settle for less. And then again, it brings up that question as to what is the point of the PlayStation 5 Pro? A lot of people are looking at this as it, it is kind of useless, and I'm kind of on that end. It does seem kind of useless, a pro version of these consoles right now, unless you are getting 4K 60 guaranteed, to me seems kind of useless it's just to get some updated ray tracing and things like that i'm not really that interested in that but it says sony is working on a new high-end version of the ps5 codename trinity which we talked about yesterday and that they say here from sources familiar with sony's plan tell the first sony's asking developers to create a new ps5 pro exclusive graphics mode which combines sony's new playstation spectral super resolution upscaling to 4k resolution with a 60 fps frame rate and ray tracing effects and this was my thought when we were reading about this the other day and more we hear about the ps5 pro is pssr is going to be the more important thing than the actual specs inside the ps5 pro the 10 percent boost in cpu isn't going to matter the 45 percent boost in gpu isn't going to matter as much as the playstation spectral super resolution and i think that is actually going to carry over to xbox as well when the new xbox comes out or when the nintendo switch 2 comes out i think it is going to be this secret sauce the software side stuff this the tools as we always talked about throughout this generation that is going to be far more important for getting this solid 60 fps frame rates that we have been promised now for a generation maybe even a generation and a half but the beginning of this generation we were definitely promised 60 fps as the benchmark and i would say overall most games have that performance when most games are getting 60 frames per second there may be dips here and there in the fps but now as we're getting into these newer triple a games we are now starting to see it being harder and harder for these consoles to actually keep up and even give performance modes as there have been a number of 30 fps games that are being released here for the xbox and for the ps5 so it's going to be that pssr stuff and the same thing with xbox with their direct sr which hopefully will be implemented going forward with a lot of their games and then also how the developer is going to be able to optimize properly for the upcoming consoles. so that will be the game changer in my opinion going forward they also say while sony wants this new mode in games the ps5 pro enhanced label will be available for a variety of other scenarios that include 30 fps games so it isn't just going to be 60 fps that get that label because sony's going to want to put that ps5 pro enhanced on as many games as possible to try to entice people to upgrade their ps5 and pick up this new 
this new console but the the reality is if you're somebody who just really wants to lock 60 fps you're gonna have to keep your eyes out for does the ps5 pro enhanced version actually give you that they say developers have the option of increasing the target resolution for ps5 pro games that run at a fixed resolution on the ps5 or even increasing the target maximum resolution for games that run at variable resolution on the ps5 so there will be patches coming out for current games on the playstation 5 that will get the ps5 pro enhanced labeled so you get a, a better overall experience with it which is that is a good thing to see that the the developers there will get that opportunity if they want to increase their target resolution they want to increase the fps and stuff they will have that ability and they say that could mean that we see ps5 pro enhanced games that run between 1080p and 1440p resolution at 30 fps on the base ps5 run between 1280p and 2160p on the ps5 pro at the same frame rate so if you're okay with 30 fps gaming you are going to potentially get that bump in resolution and if it does go up all the way up to 4k that will be a nice thing for those 30 fps games they say a fixed resolution increase from 1440p to 2160p would also qualify as a ps5 pro enhanced game and developers could also choose to enable ray tracing effects and get the ps5 pro enhanced label without improving resolution or frame rate so you can have the exact same version of the game better ray tracing and it will get that label and again it's clear they're trying to get that label on as many games as possible. To me, if the PS5 Pro is basically just delivering for a lot of these games better ray tracing, that I will have zero interest in a mid-gen refresh. Even if Xbox puts out a mid-gen refresh and what we're getting is just improved ray tracing, to me, it's not something I would really care about. So as if a developer wants to target 60 FPS instead of 30 FPS with the same resolution, this may also qualify as a PlayStation 5 Pro enhanced game so simply running a game at a more stable frame rate on the ps5 pro is not enough for the enhanced label though sony also wants won't add the label to games that run with a variable resolution and see increased resolutions on the ps5 pro that doesn't improve the maximum resolution so if a game moves from 1440p to 2160p variable to 1800p to 2160p variable this will not qualify for the enhanced label so there you have it there are multiple ways to get the enhanced label but they are being kind of strict here in terms of the variable resolutions that will not give you the enhanced label if that's the only thing really that is changing so ps5 pro we're going to continue to hear about it until sony finally comes out and gives the official announcement at this point we kind of know everything about it it's a kind of not that exciting it's not as exciting as I feel like it was last generation with the PS4 Pro and then the Xbox One X, but who knows, maybe the secret sauce with the PSSR really does significantly improve the overall performance and stability of the games coming out on these consoles, and that will be enough for people to actually want to go out and pick this thing up and sell their old PlayStation 5. But let's jump over here. Let's uh, talk about a couple of more things. First of all, there is a big, big, big hack here that happened for ready or not developer who has had four terabytes of data stolen including full source code it says void interactive developer behind ready or not has been a victim of a massive data breach with over four terabytes of data stolen this includes over 2.1 million files in total which that is not a good thing for this game. If you're somebody who plays it, this is something to definitely keep an eye on. They say the ransom group, which Insider Gaming has decided against mentioning the name of, announced in March that it had access to the data. Since then, however, Void Interactive has not mentioned any sort of breach or concern regarding Raider or not. As far as the legitimacy of the hack, Insider Gaming has been shown the contents of the files taken under the condition they aren't republished. The data includes all of the Ready or Not source code. It also includes code for what appears to be console builds of the game, as well as results of various performance tests and insider gaming was shown images of the game running on the playstation 4 test kit with builds taken from the breach there was also build data for the xbox one xbox series x and s and playstation 5 included and they say here luckily what doesn't appear to be impacted in any way from what was gathered is personal information of players or staff members at void which i guess that is kind of the bright side of this entire situation but that is a ton of data four terabytes of data stolen i mean that can literally ruin the game give it to pretty much everybody out there it is not a good thing it's sad to see here for void interactive i would say from the gamers perspective here 
looking at this if you're somebody who's been wanting to play this game on console now you kind of have a heads up that it potentially could be coming to the xbox one the series xs and the playstation 4 and 5 so there you have it i mean unfortunate event there but that's a lot of a lot of data that has been stolen from void interactive okay let's talk about fallout shelter because fallout again with the tv show has just been an absolute success and an absolute boost for the fallout games and this also includes fallout shelter it says fallout shelters daily revenue rockets to eighty thousand after the tv show debut which is just another thing that we have continued to see so we've seen fallout 76 re record numbers we've seen fallout 4 get a big boost fallout new vegas get a massive boost and now we're seeing fallout shelter which is that mobile game get a big boost in the actual revenues that they have this makes complete sense because the TV show itself is going to have a far broader audience than the video games. You're going to have people that don't play video games or don't like video games watching it. And you're going to have casuals who are playing Candy Crush every day that are watching the Fallout TV series. So the correlation here between the mobile game, which in my opinion, I mean, mobile games, they're casual games. You're going to have more people interested in just downloading it on their phone and playing it. And you're going to see a major increase in revenue, especially because Fallout Shelter, for a lot of people, like this game. And there's an easy way to capture people who have been watching the TV show to go in and actually try the mobile game. So it's been a huge boost here for Fallout. And we'll see how long this does last after people have finished watching the first season. When will the hype kind of die off for the video games? But cool to see a revitalization here of Fallout and all their games coming back. And this will be the kind of waiting period where people are going to play all these other Fallout games. And then you have Bethesda out there probably thinking at the same time as well that they need to capitalize with all this hype and bring out some information for Fallout 5 whenever that game is going to be released. It won't be for a very long time because Elder Scrolls 6 is in the works and then Fallout 5 is going to be after that. All right, let's jump over here and let's talk about... Take two interactive because this is, I would say, a surprising report because you would have thought with Rockstar under them with Grand Theft Auto and games like Red Dead Redemption 2 and just their, their massive titles that they put out there that just make tons and tons of money that they wouldn't have been as affected by what is happening in the industry, which is with the cutbacks and the reduction in labor and the reduction of their games, games being canceled. But it looks like that is not the case. Take two interactive is laying off around 5% of its staff and they say here that we don't know what teams will be affected or what games are going to be affected in terms of the cancellation but there will be these cuts coming take two interactive shared on tuesday that it plans to lay off five percent of its total workforce and the move will cut hundreds of employees and some upcoming games canceled it's not entirely clear at this time which teams will be affected by the cuts or which projects are being canceled so there you have it it is a another huge company another huge publisher that is making cutbacks to kind of deal with the gaming industry right now with the increase in the cost to produce these games and these games not being able to reach enough people to make enough money. But you would think Grand Theft Auto would have been one of those games that would have been no problem. And I, it probably it has made tons and tons of money. So I'm sure their profit margins on Grand Theft Auto 5 are phenomenal. But Grand Theft Auto 6, we don't know how much that thing is going to clock in in terms of development costs and how much they're going to have to make back on that to have a good ROI. And they are doing this because they are saying that they would save around $165 million a year. So even for them, that $165 million is something they need to save in, in order to obviously make the shareholders happy so there it is some more layoffs some more cutbacks and some more game cancellations coming here from take two interactive let's just end off here let's talk about this the jabba the hut mission and star wars outlaws this was a big thing i mean star wars outlaws unfortunately it has just been under a ton of controversy since they gave the prices of all the different editions and then the always online stuff to actually download and play the game. And now there's another thing here, and that is with the Jabba the Hutt missions. The other day, people were looking at the fact that this mission was locked behind a paywall, which got a lot of people very much pissed off. And now Ubisoft has responded to this. So it says in a new report by IGN, a Ubisoft spokesperson has promptly addressed the fan backlash over Star Wars Outlaws locking the Jabba the Hutt mission behind a season 
pass. As naturally, prospective players quickly criticize Ubisoft for basically hiding the Jabba's Gambit mission behind the paywall. After all, Star Wars Outlaws is already a full price AAA game, which is absolutely true. Very annoying when they hide missions behind paywalls or when there's exclusive missions that you can only get on one platform or another because of some exclusivity deal that was paid. The Hogwarts Legacy stuff does come to mind when I when I think about this. It says in today's IGN report, Ubisoft elaborated on the exact nature of the mission. So for those out there who want more information on this and you don't want to get the season passed, they say to clarify, Jabba the Hutt and the Hutt Cartel are one of the main syndicates in Star Wars Outlaws and will be part of the experience for everyone who purchases the game, regardless of addition. And they say they also add that the Jabba's Gambit mission is an optional additional mission for season pass owners. So I guess I don't know if that really changes how people would feel because you're still paying full price. But these games, a lot of them have season passes where they add more DLC and they add more content after the fact. So at least at the end of the day, the actual job of the hut and the hut cartel are still in the game. But if you this really is something you don't want to pay for, just don't buy the game. Also, these Ubisoft games with the season passes, the ultimate editions, the high end editions, they go on sale very, very fast. This game's going to come out. There are going to be a lot of hype from fans of it who want to play it. And then once that hype dies down, you see Ubisoft a month, two, three months after the release, just completely slash the price of it. And then you can pick up everything you want for far less. And then, then there's also Ubisoft plus if you do want to play these games, that's only if you want to support the game. I mean, those are the other options rather than actually paying for it full price on day one. Cause to me, I mean, the game looks cool. I'm interested in playing the game, but there is a lot of things here that honestly I wouldn't want to support. So if you don't want to support full price, there's just different ways you can go out there and play this game after the game does launch but i will end the video there guys if you did enjoy this video make sure to hit that thumbs up if you are new here hit that subscribe and i'll catch you guys in the next video